Well, good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Day! It seems a little bit odd that uh, my family and I are here in this great big sanctuary, and we're the only four here. Where are you all? It uh, kind of reminds me of uh, the lesson that we're learning through the empty tomb and the empty sanctuary. Uh, it took an empty tomb for the resurrection of Jesus to really be understood. And I think it's taken an empty sanctuary for us to realize that it's not about us gathering here on Sunday morning as much as it is about us being the church wherever he's called us to be. And so my prayer is that you're learning a lesson through all of this as we are. And I'm so grateful to have my family here. So grateful to have Sierra and Hunter with us. Uh, what, a, what a beautiful day to celebrate our risen Lord. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer here. and. Uh, pause and then we'll blend in carolyn and andy's worship set with us and then we'll get the uh the sermon uh mixed in with this recording as well but uh, let's take a moment and pray as we celebrate this amazing day of remembrance of jesus the risen lord father in heaven thank you thank you for knowing exactly what we your people needed a savior Lord, may your Holy Spirit come down upon our land and reveal that need to each and every one of us so that we will turn to the risen Savior and seek your face. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Jesus, thank you for going through the hardship of coming to earth as man and, and living on this earth, going to the cross on my behalf and on our behalf, Lord God. And we just praise you for coming up from the grave. Thank you. Thank and Lord, that reminds us that you are faithful. And whatever you say, you are faithful to, to continue on to fruition. And so, Lord, we praise you for this day. We look forward to celebrating with our brothers and sisters in the faith, uh, even through this recording, Lord God, and, and through our worship time. And Lord, we look forward to the day that we will all gather again in this sanctuary rejoicing and praising the Lord together, sharing of our blessings, sharing the testimonies of our faith yes, in you. Yes. Oh, Father, we look forward to that day with great anticipation because we know it will come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you guys. We look forward to worshiping together with you. Good morning and happy Easter. Today is the greatest day on the calendar for the Christians, and for all the world, really. Our Lord and our Savior conquered death, sin, hell, and the grave. We have victory. We have confidence. We have a hope. We have a future. We need not despair. Though times are trying and tough, our God will see us through. Just when it seems as though death was victorious and the end had come to Jesus' life. On the third day, the stone was rolled away, and just as he had said, Jesus came out of the grave. And because of that, we know that everything he has promised will be true. And, and great are his promises. If you don't know his promises, find a Bible. I encourage you, and just start reading. So, anyway, happy Easter. Please sing these songs with us. And uh, this is called My Redeemer Lives. For these songs, you can look up the lyrics on, your, on another phone, maybe, on a computer, whatever. And uh, please sing with us.
This is Christ the Lord has risen today.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.
ya. Happy Easter. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Hi again, Lighthouse family. Uh, being that we are the only ones in the sanctuary, my family has agreed to pray over me before the preaching. Go ahead, Hunter. Thank you, dear Jesus, for this wonderful Resurrection Sunday, and I thank you for the opportunity to gather here as a family and worship you. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us through this difficult time to remember just how amazing what you have done is. And I pray that you would help dad as he preaches to us to speak clearly and speak your word and i pray that you would speak through him to us and help us to really fully grasp all the ways that you have blessed us dear god i just thank you for this opportunity to worship together as a church body even from our own homes and i just thank you for the opportunity to celebrate the fact that Jesus has risen Amen. and that our thank sins you, are Jesus. forgiven. Thank you. And Jesus, we just thank you for this Easter Sunday and this chance to celebrate you and everything that you've done for us. And we just pray that you would anoint dad as he preaches and that he would say only what you want to say yes. what will bring you the God, most glory. Holy Spirit, God. God, we just pray for everyone watching from home that we would all be blessed by the words that you give up yes. dad today. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you guys very much. Oh, what a blessing to have my family be the ones that are praying over me. It is very awkward to continue to uh, bring forth messages uh, through recordings, through television, uh, through whatever means that we may have. But I praise the Lord for these, the opportunities that he gives us. And I'd like for us to begin this evening, well, this morning, uh, reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to begin at verse 1. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of the first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are all still alive though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. And lastly, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. Here ends the reading of the Lord's Word. So this is Resurrection Sunday. We celebrate an empty tomb, but not just the fact that there was an empty tomb, and still is an empty tomb, but we celebrate the risen Savior. As you can see, the banner in the background behind me says, He has risen just as He said from Matthew 28 6. Jesus had to go to the cross in order for us to receive the hope of eternal life after His resurrection. This is an amazing concept for us to wrap our minds around. The resurrection sets us apart from all other beliefs. All other beliefs have uh, an idol that they worship or someone dead that they pay homage to, but not Christians. We believe in and serve a risen Savior. Praise be to God. As we look through the account from John, about this Sunday morning, 
We begin by doing a little recap. It was quite a week the disciples had. Quite a lot changed in their lives from that Sunday morning when uh, Jesus came riding into town on the donkey and everybody was expecting a great celebration, a new kingdom that would come. And, and in just a few short days, some of them that were yelling celebration were yelling, crucify him, crucify him. And the disciples were being told at the Last Supper that um, one of them would betray Jesus and another would deny him three times before a rooster crowed. A lot was taking place in that week. A lot of emotion, a lot of struggle, a lot of difficulty. And Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane and, and prayed, and even so desperately that he was sweating blood droplets. So desperately that he prayed out to God that not his will, but the Lord's will be done. It was a very difficult week. Then the betrayal happened. Judas came and gave up Jesus. Jesus was taken away and imprisoned and questioned. And um, false witnesses came forth and uh, trumped up a bunch of charges against him. And then the next morning he was flogged. Crown of thorns put on his head. Made to carry a cross. Put on the cross, speared in the side, and he breathed out his last. But we don't end there. Yesterday was Saturday, kind of the silent day of the week during the Holy Week. Not a lot, not at all, anything really written in Scripture about it. The Sabbath day that was taken for rest. But then we come to Sunday. Mary Magdalene and several of the ladies, they get up early in the morning and, and we're here in John chapter 20. And they're headed to the tomb. They're, they're ready to, uh, to, to take care of the, the site where Jesus has been buried. They're honoring him. And they get there and it's empty. The stone was rolled away and no one was in it. And so they run to find Simon Peter and tell him what has happened. Verse 2 says, so they came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. There was great perplexity within these ladies as, as they're curiosity about where did Jesus go the body doesn't just get up and walk away and there was nobody there there was no sign of anyone there that would have taken him so Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb both were running but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first I have to laugh as I as I read this um, it's kind of a humble way of John explaining that he runs faster than Peter as we know that John is the disciple being spoken of here, the one that Jesus loved. Both were running. Hmm. They were in a hurry. They were, they were anxious to see what it is that these ladies had, had discovered. They wanted to find out for themselves. They want proof. They, they want to know for certain that this is what's taken place. When John got there, he bent over and he, he looked into the, into the tomb and he saw strips of linen lying there. But he didn't go in. And then Peter shows up, huffing and puffing, I'm sure. And he arrived at the tomb and he went straight in. You know, Peter, Peter, he's he's gung ho. He's going in and he's gonna find out what is happening. And he finds the burial cloth as well as the linens that had been wrapped around Jesus' body. The clothes were not just lying there. They were folded and separated. Finally, John goes into the tomb. And when he reached in and, and, and walked forth, he saw and he believed. 
He saw that the tomb truly was empty. He saw that Jesus was no longer there. They still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead yet. There was still a little bit more clarification that Jesus would have to make later on, which we know because many of us have already studied the word of the Lord and know that Jesus spends some time with the disciples before he ascends into heaven. But then in verse 10, we see that the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood there outside the tomb crying as she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and, and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Can you imagine the, the anguish that Mary must have been feeling as she's, she's crying? I had an occasion this last week to stand next to a lifeless body while the mother laid over it, weeping over her loss. That's very humbling to, to watch as a mother grieves the loss of a child. And, and here's Mary grieving the loss of a good friend, somebody that she loved. And these, the, the angel that she sees asks, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Her attention was still on her grief. Her, her, her mind was still swirling. She was just hearing a voice. She wasn't attentive to it yet. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener. She said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. You know what this tells me? This tells me that Mary has such a love for Jesus that she knows his voice. That she is attentive to knowing the voice of her Savior. It's a challenge to me. It's a challenge that I need to remember daily. Am I attentive to the voice of Jesus? Am I listening for him to speak to me and, and direct my path? Am I ready to hear him and turn to him with my full attention? That's how Mary reacted. She turned towards him. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. A couple of things that strike me from these few short verses. First of all, Jesus is associating himself with her in terms of his father and her father. His God and her God. The unity that we have in the fellowship of believers. Having one true God. Knowing the father. Being a part of his family being brothers and sisters with Jesus. And Mary, leaving that place and telling the disciples what she had heard from Jesus, just as he told her to, kind of reminds me of Matthew 28 and Mark 16, when Jesus gives the, the disciples the Great Commission after he's spent some time with him before the resurrection. He tells them to go. After, before the ascension, pardon me. It's a good thing my wife is here. I'm getting tongue-tied again, as I often do. Before the ascension into heaven, 
Jesus has this encounter with the disciples and tells them to go and make disciples. And here is Mary going and telling about Jesus, just as he told her to. And on that evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, because they were still concerned that the Jews might be coming after them and taking them and, and arresting them and, and doing something to them. But it's also a reminder to us that they are together. And even though we are not here in this same building together today, we are still together in spirit. And we are still together through communication. The disciples were together with the doors locked. And Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters in the faith, may I come before you and say, Peace be with you. As you know the Father, and as he knows you, allow his peace to reign over you, especially throughout these uncertain times, but always. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. They were celebrating. Now, mind you, they're, they're coming off this, uh, this great big curiosity of what's going on, this, this difficulty of processing through what has happened in this last week. All of these events that have taken place, and now Jesus is here in this locked room with us, telling us to have peace, but he's here. He, he's risen. Wow! They must have been just amazed, more so than we can even comprehend. And in their amazement, Jesus reminds them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. When I read this statement, and with that, he breathed on them, I think back to the creation of the world. I think back to God be able, being able to to speak and the world and everything in it came into being. And then he breathed into Adam life. Jesus here is breathing into the disciples life, saying, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus, our risen Savior, Worthy is the king. He is alive and well and seated at the right hand of the Father. Anytime I think about the tomb and I, I think about death, I, I think about um, words that the Lord lays on my heart when it comes time to, to share in a, a message of hope for people grieving over the loss of a loved one. And, and I immediately go back to John chapter 14, which would have been shared with the disciples just a few nights before this Sunday occurrence. Uh, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. He's telling them that through this resurrection and and. And when he is ascended into heaven, he is going to prepare a place for each and every one of his followers. Our heavenly dwelling. Hallelujah. Amen. We, you should know the way to the place where I am going, Jesus told the disciples. And, and, and Thomas was still a little naive. He still wasn't quite sure. And he says, I'm not sure. And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Ladies and gentlemen, we can only be assured of the hope that Jesus is speaking of here if we are in relationship with him. Because no one can come to the Father except through Jesus.
later on in that same discourse that Jesus is having with his disciples on that night, we hear him say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. I have told you now before it happens. He's letting them know. He was foreshadowing what was happening. And here on this resurrection day, the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive in their presence in this locked room. And it's happened just as he said it would. When Jesus says something, we can believe that it's going to happen. And Jesus said he will come again. To judge the living and the dead. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the risen Savior? Are you ready to celebrate like no celebration you could ever imagine when you enter into that great throne room with the Lord and look forward to Him saying, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Are you ready for that? If you're not and you're listening to this, you still have time. You still have an opportunity to place your life in the hands of the Father. You have an opportunity to repent and turn from your old ways and allow Jesus to transform you into a new creation. One of the things that I find so beautiful about the, the empty tomb and the resurrection Sunday is the idea of Jesus coming up out of that grave, a new creation. He's defeated Satan. Satan had no grip on him. Brothers and sisters, as we live in faith in Jesus and allow him to be master of our lives, Satan has no grip on us either. And don't let him. So it is my heart's cry that on this Resurrection Sunday, we not only celebrate an empty tomb, we celebrate our risen Savior. The Savior who, who came to this earth because we each needed a sacrifice. And he did it. Just as he said he would. And he will come again, Hallelujah. just as he said he will. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, thank you for this time of celebrating Resurrection Sunday with my brothers and sisters and family in the faith. Thank you, Lord, that even though we are separated by distance, we are not separated by faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming and, and living a life a sinless life for all of us to, to hear and to witness and understand from your word the desire of your heart for ours. Thank you, Father, for not giving up on us, but for allowing your Son to come and pay the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf. Lord, we honor you. We give you praise this glorious day. We celebrate our risen Savior with anticipation and expectation of that union that we will have with you one day in the heavenly realms where you are king and master and we are your children. To your glory, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. I miss you. I, so, I so look forward to, to meeting with you again and, and having an opportunity to give you a hug. God bless you. Go in peace and serve the Lord.